that looks like Darth Vader. It just didn't turn out good. You have the story of the guy's name on there too, right? Didn't you do like the guy's name because he tattooed your oh, name? Yeah, yeah. Philo yes. Pagano. Like we like this. <laughs> the story of how that happens actually pretty good. Dude from Italy came came to my shop and he got my logo tattooed on his wrist and I'm like, that's insane, like rad. So I took him to lunch and right after lunch I'm like, I'm taking you to a tattoo parlor. I want you to sign your name on my leg and I'm gonna get it tattooed. <laughs> And it turns out he's like a graffiti artist, and he did that, which is like a cool logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FP. Yeah. So, like, I got his initials <laughs> tattooed on my leg. That's awesome. My wife, I got home, and she's like, you are an idiot. Like, what, <laughs> what the hell? Do you, she's like, you don't even have my name on your leg, or do you? Oh, I got a, I got an L okay. on my wrist for her. I got my grandpa's face on my ribs. Yeah. He's got two cigars up his nose. A picture I, I took of him when I was a kid. I got, like, random stuff. Yeah. He's That's a awesome. tattoo man. <laughs> I'm scared of a tattoo just because, yeah, I'm just scared of a tattoo. Multiple yeah. reasons there. And, and like, <laughs> I think. If he gets one, he'll do his whole body. That's yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Judging by the behavior <laughs> from last all, night, he's like, yeah, I'm yeah. all in. I'll be like, exactly. the snake. Yeah. I'll be like that snake man. <laughs> he's all <laughs> in. <laughs> my brother always, he doesn't have any tattoos, and he was always like, I'm going to get a ruler, like a little bit of a ruler on my finger, because like, that's such a. You know, it's useful. It's useful. Like that's such a useful thing. Like, all right, that's one and three, three eighths. Like, cool. Yeah, what if you grow? You would though? get something like that. It's I know gonna eventually, you like, know, dude. You as can he build, gets older, it's gonna, it'll be out of whack. He's like, yeah, you can, you can build like used a to measure right not, now. It's like a off. You could build a whole YouTube channel, like how I built my house yeah, right with there, measuring with my inches. finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's the middle finger the whole time. He like, <laughs> he's in like, it's like how it was made. That's awesome. It's like, man, that's so the it cuts it off and it's over. Yeah, it's, over. it's like that's the coolest baby house I've ever seen. I've like, got build it know, all with my finger. We got guys have like some hair on their toe, right? They do. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was yeah. hanging out with my friends one night, and somebody had a tattoo gun, and so I I had all my friends. Each one drew like a little face on my toe, so I have a face in the hair of my toe is his toupee, like a little oh, bit yeah. of the hair. That's what I got like such stupid. So <laughs> stupid you have a stuff. tattoo on your toe using <laughs> yeah. your hair toe. The toe yeah. on your the, the, the hair, hair on, on your my toe, toe is the hair of the little face that they <laughs> tattooed. On. That is like I feel like I need to see that. Yeah, I'll show you so I might get that one. That's yeah. one that I, I would I totally that. do that yeah. one. We were drinking and I was like, "This would be wicked funny. You guys should each like you do the nose, you do the eyes." It's stupid, but it's there forever now. <laughs> How old were you when all that happened? That was a few years ago, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that was last weekend. <laughs> yeah, last week. Yeah, he like, says a few years, which yeah, was three days ago. Yeah, that was like yeah. six months ago. Last yeah. night, I ever went to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that glass of wine really got me going. That's uh, cool. That is great. Look, circle this around to you. I think we're already kind of, I think the guys have already hit the record button, which is even greater <laughs> on this stuff. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, so today we have Mike with us from SJC Drums. Um, uh, I met Mike, I guess it's been a few months now. Longer than that. I yeah. think we met back in the spring and yep. uh, had some really good conversations. Uh, Mike's one of those guys that I, I, this, I feel like I could t we could talk to forever because the amount of stories that come out of you and like the th the experiences you've had in life and like it's just it's one of those that I, at first like I was telling you last night at dinner I was like I called not didn't call BS on him but I was like man some of this just can't be true and like I went down the rabbit hole hard on you just to like see if this stuff was true and like everything checks out <laughs> so the, the thing is like all the stories always check out um, you're, you're one of the mostly just honest people I think I, I've met who are just like true to who you are and then this the people that in the in the stuff you've gotten to experience in life is pretty awesome so uh Thanks, on this man. on this podcast building a brand we wanted to talk about like who you are uh and uh also like what is SJC drums and and if you're I guess you'd have to be a little bit under a rock not to even understand what SJC drums is because there's a few people that play your drums I've got like, a few. Like so, yeah. so like just to start it off, like who are a couple of the big names that are constantly smacking on your kits? Yeah, we're real lucky, and I'm so grateful to have such a awesome family that we call it the SJC family. And we've got Jay Weinberg from Slipknot, Trey Cole from Green Day, Imagine Dragons uses our drums, Frank Zumo from Sum Forty One, bunch of bands that I've loved since like my childhood you know they play SJC and they proudly play our drums and they're ambassadors of the brand and you know just creative individuals that push me way outside my comfort zone and what I thought was creative and yeah these drummers that play our drums have always inspired me to just try to do the the biggest coolest thing possible super lucky 
Yeah, your drums aren't like normal. I say normal drums. Uh, you guys are really forward thinking in in how and how and just the style of drum you make. So everyone makes these bland drum kits, right? That is not what you guys do. Yeah, we go full custom. I mean, we've got you know you can get a typical you know black satin stain or a natural stain drum set. Like I love I love all drums. I'm like a nerd about drum history and all the companies that are out there. I'm inspired by them all. But I was always really into, you know, art, street art, tattoo artists, and just what music means to people. And I was always trying to go way above and beyond and include that in the drums or the custom badge or a different gasket behind the lug. Most drum companies use a black gasket. I'm like, why can't it be pink? Yeah. You know, and let the drummer choose that. And um, just all the way down from the finish to putting lights in the drums, different hoop styles and painting the inside of the drum or wrapping the drum in fur. Like, why not? Just try it. And people like it. You know, everybody wants to express themselves. And that's what music to me is all about. And there's no right or wrong way to express yourself. And so that's what drumming has been all about for me. And that's what our drums represent. What's the uh, what, what's two things? What's your favorite drum kit that you've made, and what's something that's just been the most wild? Like, mm, I'll figure that out. <laughs> um, we've had a few of those. I'd say my favorite was a drum kit that I worked on um, a long time ago with my buddy. Uh, he's known as the Butcher, and uh, he played in a band. And he was <laughs> I mean, think about butcher. that name, the awesome. Butcher. <laughs> yeah, he's all, he's a great. <laughs> He's a great dude. And when I met him, he was like, have you ever wood burned a drum shell? And I was like, what is that? And he was like, dude, I, he'll like charcoal paint a piece of cardboard or wood burn, you know, a table or whatever. And he's like, I want to come and wood burn a drum set. And he's an incredible artist. And he came in and wood burned this whole drum kit with owls on it and trees wow. and acorns. And it was mind blowingly beautiful. And when it was done, just the amount of work that went into it, I was so, you know, I was admiring it the whole time and watching his passion going into it. So that's definitely my favorite kit we've ever built just because of the the process that I went through with him. Um, and him and I became really good friends through that. And uh, he changed my outlook on like, What's you, can, you can do anything. Like, that's insane. Um, and we get hit up with some wacky stuff. Like, can you make the drums light on fire when I hit them? Like things that are, that I don't want to do for liability purposes, you know? <laughs> I mean, I could. Pyrotechnics within the yeah. drums. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that we could, but like awesome. you need like a different type of, you know, an engineer that does like lighting and stuff that'll do the, the pyro on that. I don't want anything to do with it. Um, the hardest one we've built was, uh, there's a, a band that has done some really cool stuff from where I'm from four years strong. Uh, the drummer Jake has been a friend of mine. He was probably like the first one of the first five people that ever got a drum set from us. And he wanted a drum set that looked like the parquet floor of the Boston Celtics uh, arena. Oh, dang. And so we went in, um, Josh, who was our head builder, and uh, he went in and did some research on the, on the floor, what kind of wood they use and all this, which was so cool and fun. And then he cut up all these little individual pieces of wood and inlaid good. them and then did a high gloss lacquer over it. That was the most intense, like, labor-intensive thing that we've done, but it turned out beautifully, and then seeing Jake play it on stage was like, whoa, you know? So can you tell us the story of how you got started with all these big bands that you told us last night? Yeah, yeah, so we just, I just started playing drums as a kid and just really was drawn to drumming, just what it did and what it made me feel like, and I became, I wanted to be a drummer, you know, I became um, a drummer at age nine and my parents got me a drum set, which was so cool, you know, woke up Christmas morning and red drum set, like I was like. Do you remember the brand? Percussion Plus, yeah, yeah it yeah. was sick. It was just like, you know, like kind of like the Sears catalog kit yeah, yeah. set up with the rack toms like all crooked and stuff. <laughs> no one knew, my parents tried to set it up, you know, and that like totally changed my life. You know, I'm 38 now and that's almost 30 years ago. Like. Yeah. I'll never forget that feeling and um, got lessons and I was always like, do I do my homework first or do I play the drums first? Like I'm playing drums. I want to play all the time. You know, my mom and dad drove into my drum lessons every day, um, every couple of days and um, just got obsessed with it and then went down the rabbit hole of watching MTV and seeing Green Day and Rancid and all these bands like doing their thing and it made me feel made me feel like I can have an outlet for something, you know, like my aggression and my emotions and I can hit the drums and it makes me feel this way, which felt awesome. And uh, my brother wanted to play in typical, you know, sibling 
stuff. I was just like, you can't touch my drum set, dude. Like, <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> so he got a kit, um, found it used, and went and got it, and uh, ended up pulling the wrap off and like painting the hardware and staining it and making it look different. And I was like, dude, that's sick. Like, that looks awesome. How did you do that? Like, what made you want to do that? He was expressing himself, you know, not just playing the drums, but also like making it look how he wanted it to. And uh, that changed like everything for me because I, again, I've always been into street art and just expressing yourself in certain ways. And as a kid, I didn't know how you could do that. And so I was playing in bands and, you know, putting on some local shows when I was a kid, like 13, going to Kinko's and like making a flyer and passing it out to my friends at school and um, just really got really deep into like DIY aspect of like punk rock music and realized that there's a lot of other people like that, especially where I'm from, like Worcester, Massachusetts and New England. That scene has so many cool people and bands and like industry people that are that are there and just made a community. And uh, just fast forward, you know, I kept doing that throughout high school, ended up getting signed to a label and went on tour, going to the Vans Warp Tour and like sneaking in and setting up a booth with my brother and like just meeting people um, and not knowing what I was doing. You know, we were actually forming a business and like people were calling and emailing us. I just always thought it was so cool that somebody would trust us to take their idea and make it a drum. I want mine to have a leopard wrap. Okay, cool. We can do that. I want it to be this. All right, cool. You know, like me and my brother just drove all over the country, like band wants a drum kit and they're going on tour you guys are awesome like where's your first show ohio all right cool we'll be there with your drum set and like go on the road with them and then they'd stay at my parents house and like sleep over after their boston show and like just became really good friends with these these bands and then they'd tell their friend yo mike and scott from sjc drums these guys are cool like hit them up so we just networked so organically and like these drummers you know the ones that i've mentioned just they're my friends, and it became so you natural. Early, you met him early on. Early on, yeah. yeah. Like I've years, known Jay Weinberg since. Yeah. He, yeah, I mean, it's been 20 years since we started the company. Yeah. I met Jay when he was 18 years old. You know, like <laughs> that's wild. We just it? grew up with the scene, really. And um, MySpace was coming out then, and social media was happening. So I was just going around with a camera, and I was like, "Hey, you know, John Smith, here's your drum. Like we're making it right <laughs> now." And next up was like. Cyrus from Newfound Glory, here's your kid. And people thought that was cool that like their wow. drum was next to a band that they liked. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And it was always me kind of fulfilling what I kind of wanted to have when I was a kid. I bought a custom kit and the experience wasn't what I imagined it was going to be. Spending all that money and, you know, wanting to feel like I was a part of that kind of crew that I was inspired by it fell so short. And so as SJC grew and started to scale a little bit, I always made a commitment to myself that anything that we do, I want the experience for anybody, whether you're Trey from Green Day or 10 years old getting your first kit or second kit, whatever. I want that experience to like really be so much more than just what the drums are. I want you to feel like a rock star. That's awesome. And that's why you'll continue to be successful. Yeah. So, so the hustle, you know, uh, this whole podcast thing is building a brand, right? And and the brand you guys have built from just those early roots of just really putting it and grinding and doing all the work. Uh, Last night you told us a story about uh, Warp Tour, right? Yeah. And so, like, I want to hit that just a little bit because I think it's hilarious. And it's it's hilarious, but it's also you guys, you guys did what others wouldn't do. (laughs) Yeah. And you had the drive to make that happen and it took advantage of the opportunity that again yeah. also helped you guys launch in a way. So yeah. tell us a little yeah. bit about Warp Tour. What year was that? Oh gosh. Yeah. I met I, I met a dude, his name is John Strader, and he's one of my best friends to this day. We met when we were twelve and um I didn't know much about punk music and he was like, Play the fast beat and I'm like, I don't know what that is. He's yeah. like, It's like this and he showed me all these bands and he was like, We had just met and he's like, You going to Warp Tour? And I was like, I don't know what that is. He's like get a ticket and come with me. So we went and it was the Vans Warped Tour, you know. Huge back in the day. Five stages in a huge, you know, parking lot, 50 bands, thousands of people, vendors, merch, you know, and I just went and I was just like, this is crazy. And so right then and there, I'm like, we were starting a band together. I'm like, we're going to play the Warped Tour someday. And um, went every year. And for those of you that don't know the Warped Tour, it's like every summer, 
Vans sponsors the Warp Tour. Yeah. Where go to YouTube and look. It yeah, up. just it's look it up. And they go on tour for like thirty dates. They hit every major city in the country, and it's just parking lots, five stages, fifty bands plus every every summer. And so that was like the thing of the summer that you do. You know, as a as a yep. kid that likes music, you just go and you find new bands and you're inspired and you meet people and um, that changed my world in like another new way. And so as the years progressed and I was in the band with him and we were making drums, like go to the Warp Tour and and go see what it's all about. And my band got asked to play the Hot Topic stage one year, so I was like, cool, this is amazing. And we rolled in with our van and trailer. No one told us what to do, so we were just, like, pulling in with all the kids, you know, the line of cars, and we we rolled in and went backstage, and they just let us because we had a van and trailer. <laughs> they were like, okay, it's, yeah, sure, go. And we were so like, punk rock, man. I'm like, this is easy. Like, I'm out with all the buses. I'm like, there's Travis Barker from Blink-182, like, walking to the, you know, backstage area. Like, this is nuts. I'm, I'm finally I'm backstage, you know, as a kid. And I was, like, thinking through the day. We played... And I'm like, that was kind of easy. I went home and I was telling my brother, he's like, let's go. Where is it tomorrow? I was like, I think it's in Hartford or something, Connecticut. And he's like, let's load the trailer with some drums in a tent. Let's go to let's go to Walmart and get a 10 by 10 tent and let's go. So we loaded it up and him and me and a couple of our buddies went, set up the tent, set up a booth, and we were in the vendor area. Like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> the kids at Warp Tour were like, Come, oh, you guys are cool. And I'm like, I went to Kinko's, printed out a bunch of flyers, SJC drums, get your drums your way, sjcdrums.com. And like kids are taking the flyers, thought what we do was cool. And I'm like, I'll be right back. I'm going to see if I can go backstage and like get some food. And like I did. So that <laughs> night, <laughs> that night I printed a little all access pass. Like I made my own warp Tour pass. I'm like, I'm going to definitely get backstage. I'm not going to just try. I'm going every day, you know? So I just did it. And we followed the tour for like another week, setting up a booth. <laughs> And uh, Kate Truscott, who was um, with Kevin Lyman, who who ran the Warp Tour, um, she caught me and she was just like, "Who are you guys? Like, what are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Hey, the approved vendor list." Yeah, yeah. She's like, "We've seen you guys for a couple of days now." I'm like, "What?" And I'm like, "Hey, I'm Mike. <laughs> Sorry." <laughs> She's like, "You can stay today." She's rad. Like, she turned out to be a really good friend. And Kevin Lyman actually he teaches at USC out in California now, and he's a He's a uh, he's a professor out there now, and like I went and spoke to his class about this, and like right. he became a mentor to That's me, and amazing. he he ended up <laughs> linking me with Steve Van Doren, the the founder of Vans, and um, they just thought the story was like kind of crazy, you know, and it like it is crazy, <laughs> like yeah, they thought it was, it is crazy, but like you did it, I did it, and like I told this story, um, Vans had me out, and like I spoke to a bunch of the Vans like sales reps from North and South America a couple years ago, and like Steve Van Dorn was in the front row, and I was just like, thank you, you know, for doing what you've done with the Vans Warped Tour because like you've changed so many kids' lives. Um, obviously including my own and like I am so sorry that I snuck in you know and, yeah. like but he was just like dude it, it was awesome like those days of just like going for it um, you know I'm not advocating for sneaking into stuff by any means and being sneaky like that but like we were just organically hustling and like trying to make it happen I didn't know to, to, that you could like be a sponsor nor did I have the budget yeah, or money to know, even do it yeah who would you even contact it uh, right you know I don't know. know yeah there was no like emails on a website back then so that changed the game for us like I was making little vlogs and stuff throughout it putting them on MySpace, and people just resonated with us being there and we were we were one of them you know I met a lot of the bands that play our drums that are now you know massive arena touring bands that I met on Warp Tour and Kate Truscott was like you should you got to pay us a few hundred bucks like today and I'm like I don't have a few hundred bucks so <laughs> I went to one of the made anything. yeah I'm like I don't even have any money like yeah so I went to one of the bands I was like can I borrow a few hundred bucks and they let me I was like you know it's just this com it, the yeah. community aspect of it was so powerful to me and I just so wanted to be a part of that and that has now kind of turned into me as an you know older um, person in this scene, like I feel like I, my mission now, my passion is to, you know, share those stories with the the next generation and and show them that, you know, you don't have to sneak in, but like go for it. Use the internet in certain There's ways. There's ways hustle. to use the tools today. Yeah. yeah. So by the time this episode comes out, um, will his commercial be live? 
should. Hopefully, yeah. So yeah. It, can we get permission to put that commercial at the end of the episode? Oh, for sure. Of, Even if it's not out by then, for sure. Because what you're doing now for, or how you're translating that story from the kid seeing the drummer to what's going on. Yeah. Like, it's kind of you full, full circle. Totally. Full circle. Yeah, yeah, and that's, again, back to the experience. Like, everything that we do is like, and I'm so lucky that everybody in the company knows the mission of what we do. Make great drums that, you know, meet the expectations of what the drummers wanted. They're paying a lot of money and they're waiting a decent amount of time for them to be built. But the, ex the rock star experience of just so far beyond that, that is what's going to get us more networking and more word of mouth. We've always done just word of mouth, organic marketing. And that's always worked really well for us. One kid tells five of his friends and then five of those you know, they, it just expands, you know, simple stuff, but that's really how we've done it. Um, and it's worked. Yeah. You've been in the hustle for a hot minute. And, and <laughs> like, I think that's really yeah. important for people to hear out there. Like your example of SJC drums and no matter what business is out there or what brands out there building is the willingness to do what's needed at that time and take advantage, take advantage of opportunities in ways that are a little bit different. And like you said, in today's time, there's so many opportunities from so in the social media world to create the content, make it and become like, you yeah, know, big out there. Yeah, and it's it's tough too. I talk to a lot of parents, and I talk to a lot of the the kids at you know we do some stuff with School of Rock, and so we're really in the network of um, a lot of the younger generation of musicians. And it's just like sometimes I feel like it's almost um, too much for them to take in. Where it's like, well, that band made it like overnight, and it's yep. like they didn't though. Like Twenty One Pilots didn't blow up overnight. They dominated their scene in Columbus, Ohio, and then just going to Detroit and Chicago. Work. They did that behind the scenes for so many years before their manager and their label found them. Like the internet makes it seem so easy. And to me, if it's an overnight success, like it's probably too good to be true and, and going to fizzle out as quickly as it got that big. You know, put in the work. It doesn't always have to be public. It doesn't have to always look super polished. Like I feel like more and more bands have to get it I think Dave Grohl said it. There's a really cool quote in like an interview he did. It's like, just get in the garage and suck. Like you have to, you have to hone your craft before you get in front of all those people. Like imagine getting in front of all those people and like freezing up and not knowing what you're doing. That's scary to me. And we were hustling in my grandma's basement for five, six, seven years before people really knew who we were. And that allowed me to hone that craft and like be able to hang when we got those opportunities. Yeah. You know, one of the things, uh, one of the things I think has made you guys successful is just how real you are, like how real you are and, um, a, a kind of attainable you are in, in what you do. You know, uh, you said just the last, the last couple of days you're with some industry people and like, you're always taken back by people want to take a photo with you or something yeah. like that. But the reality is, is like, you are kind of a pioneer, you are a pioneer dude, like in this whole, Thanks, this man. whole scene. I mean, uh, you, you changed a lot of things. I mean, there's people out there influencing, influencing millions of people playing your kits and yeah. seeing that. And uh, and knowing the conversations we've had a, just recently about what we want to do together moving forward is, uh, is kind of continuing uh, with that. And uh, you guys even have a kit now that's kind of for that. Because I think you, a lot of common misconceptions are people can't afford your drum kits. Yeah. Or like these are just for the big bands. But that's not the case, right? I mean, right. talk a little bit about what you guys are doing to reach that younger, younger demo or the other up and coming drummers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So we've, we've always maybe up until six or seven years ago, only ever built like custom drums, like whatever you want, we'll build it. And you know, that, like you said, is not attainable for everybody. Some there's people out there, you know, we opened up some dealers. We were only ever direct to consumer on e -com, Um, and they can call and place an order from our website or just directly from us. Uh, but we opened up a B2B network about, six or seven years ago, Guitar Center and Sweetwater, they carry our drums and some smaller sh stores around the country and international. Um, and they were like, this is really complex for people to buy from our website. You guys need like standard stuff. So we came out with a USA made line um, called the Tour Series. That's just a very set specs and set price. It's in stock. You don't have to wait. Um, and then we came out with an entry level kit, you know, an uh, under thousand dollar drum set that when we first came out with it, it, in my opinion, missed the mark. It was like a Me Too drum set that every other company had. And I was just kind of rolling with it. I was like, okay, if my partners want to do this and the people in the company think this is a good idea, 
let's go, but it didn't really feel right. It was like everybody else has like a walnut stain and chrome hardware. Like that's not what we do. You guys have never been like everyone else. Yeah, like, like you can get that. There's like four other ones. Yeah, here I am following again. What am I doing this Yeah, way? yeah. So we, we you know, kind of blew through those and then we really inserted some SJC DNA into the drums. Like just made the badges a different color and the, the washer that goes under the screw again. Like I was like, can we make that teal? And the factory was like, we've never done that, but like, <laughs> I don't see why not. I'm like, okay, like Make do it, deal. do it if you can, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they did, and so younger kids are able to get the drums, and, or you know, a weekend warrior. You know, you don't have to be a younger kid. Even even some of my friends have that kid. And like, it's awesome. It's just like, you know, I chuck it in the car. I go to practice and play a show. I'm not like a professional drummer, and so that really expanded um, our our you know our network and allowing these younger kids that dream of an SJC kit to be able to get it and feel like they're part of the family. And we get DMs all the time. We're like, I play SJC. Like, how can I get an endorsement? How can I be a part of the family? I'm like, you are. Send me a picture and I'll put it on the family page of our website. Tag us in socials. I'll repost it. Like, you're who I want playing our drums. You know, I want you telling your friends that we're cool. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, um, you, one of your good friends, uh, drummer for Rancid, right? Yep. Uh, I've watched quite a few of his videos on Instagram, um, and, and like he raves about your guys' drums, right? And he, he particularly loves one of his snare drums, like the snare. So talk a little bit about some of the, the sound characteristics of the drums and why, why people like playing them. Yeah, snare drums to me are like kind of like shoes. Like you can't really have too many of them, and like you want some different styles. And, you know, a lot of drummers have their kit, but a couple different snare drums. Maybe they set, bo- set, set both of them up or just have it in their arsenal for the studio or different songs live or whatever. And Brandon is uh, one in particular that he just has such a cool eye for design. And yep. we've made him some really rad drums, like a Rocky snare drum, or he's friends with the late Ken Block that has oh, yeah. such cool rally cars, you know, Ford and DC logos all over them. And he's, he, like me, is very inspired by that type of stuff. Like, what made you do like lime green accents on that? It just looks so, all the little details that some people may miss, you know? And uh, one of his snares, we made a, a um, Hoonigan racing yep. theme snare drum. And uh, it was baby blue powder coating and the, the whole rally car theme wrap and we put carbon fiber on the inside some of his snare drums we wrapped like copper you know in between the plies of the wood just to give a different characteristic of like when you tune it up you can tune it high or low and it'll sound however you want it you know super versatile and um we've got so many drummers that just hey man like i want my drum to sound like this like all right let's r&d some stuff and try it out We make some really thick, like 48 ply thick snare drums for Slipknot and this band called Ice Nine Kills. And we'll do whatever. We'll just try it. You know, it's fun. Yeah. So, is, you know, is that different for a drum company? Like having sound characteristics and things like that in a kit, is that uh, something you guys do? Or do all drum, again, I don't know, do all drum companies, can I call them and be like, hey, man, I want it to sound a little bit like this? Or is that really where you guys thrive? Um, I mean, I think we thrive in the in the fact that like we can do one offs. There's a lot of companies out there that that again, I'm inspired by them, and you know, I think that in some way or another, something's already been done, whether it was on drums or something else. Like we're all creatives, and I think everybody's inspired by different things. Um, there are lots of drum companies out there that have arsenals of product that do things that we don't offer. You know, I think it's just really about. I like that sound, but could you do it in this size or put a hole in the side of it so it's a little bit more dry or projects a little bit more? Um, so certainly we don't we don't do things that other drum companies don't already. Um, I think where we take it to the limit is the the capability of doing it as a one off and like doing some really extreme finishes and going way outside the box on that sort of stuff. That's cool. Uh, wildest story that you have that you can share in public <laughs> of. Uh... <laughs> Because I know there's so many. Oh my gosh! Oh, there's just like the, <laughs> I don't even like, know. So this is like this is like the like I mean, these are. I feel like all the stories, like I said, like you could you could literally like if you had like a I think you should do an SJC blog. Yeah. <laughs> this and like and it's just like the stories of the past because I think I think the past is super popular right now in the present. Yeah. Right. For sure. and, and um, you know, I hope 
I hope like Warp Tour comes back. I hope all these, and I think they will, I, because I think all this stuff is kind of coming back again. Like the '90s are starting to come back. People are like yeah. long, like our age, like the guy like, is starting yeah. to come back. Um, what's what's one of the craziest things you could think about? Like, okay, so you've been in multiple bands. What's the craziest show you've played? Um. Oh man. I think. I don't know if there's anything crazy that happened, but it like blew my mind. We played a show and I've always played in like kind of small punk rock bands that never like had any like quote unquote commercial success. Yeah. Well, that would have been a bad thing back in the day. If you were in a punk rock band that had a commercial success, you'd get punched by your fans. Yeah. It wasn't cool to be mainstream. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like I've always just had the opportunities to get out there and like do really cool things, but just be just enough under the radar where I could still work and come home and it not be like a full time thing coolest story for me i don't know if it's crazy i just we played a show in england or um belgium we were on tour in europe and we played this huge festival called gross rock Hmm. and we're you know small punk rock band we played to a few hundred kids you know every show maybe and i'm used to playing like to the bartender and the opening (laughs) band or the band that played after us you know (laughs) that's where i come from like so we showed up and we saw our slot on the bill, and I'm like, dude, we're like second to last. So like, we went out, and there was like <laughs> five thousand kids, and that, that was crazy <laughs> to me. Like, but of course, you know, being punk rock band, like something's got to go wrong. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm nervous as heck. And like, first song hit my bass drum. The bass drum like slides off the riser and like falls. And so I'm playing without a bass drum, and like the bass drum's the most important thing. Oh, yeah. That just the the carpet or whatever something happened and it flew off. So I'm trying to get somebody's attention, like put my bass drum back. Bass drum and they back. found like a brick and like put it in front of my drum. I'm like thank you. So that was kind of crazy. But you know, like I've drum tech for bands. I used to drum tech for Rancid, and I tech for a band called Newfound Glory. And a band called Newfound Glory. Probably <laughs> <laughs> craziest. Uh, I'd say one of the crazier things that has happened to me. We were in San Antonio and. Um, playing the show and my job was to set the drums up tune them where are you going you don't like my you don't like my story (laughs) um you know my job was to set the drums up tune them and uh watch the drummer when he played to make sure cymbals don't fall whatever and so i'm like crouching you know so you can't see me and uh I'm also wearing the hat of SJC. So I'm like, I'm trying to get content while I'm out here. So I had a GoPro and I had my iPad so I could like see the GoPro and someone, I don't know who, it wasn't on anybody on our crew. I think it was like the stagehand local crew didn't strap the drum monitor down. And we were playing on like, not, it was an outdoor stage. So it was a little kind of move. It was was rocky. And the band, Newfound Glory is like a really intense band. They're jumping around, everything's moving. And so I'm sitting there watching the drummer and the, the speaker, the drum monitor fell like four feet above where I was oh my God. onto my head. My head hit, my face hit the corner of the drum riser. Both my front teeth got knocked out. I got a concussion. I'm bloody. My iPad and my phone, everything is cracked. And I'm like barely like coming out of it. And the drummer's looking down at me. He's like, and I'm like, dude, I don't know, man. Oh my <laughs> the show's God. going on. I'm like, I had a concussion. Like, I'm like woozy backstage. I don't know what is going on. Like, where'd that come from? Where did that come from? Like, I don't have front teeth right now. Like, this sucks. <laughs> 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 Seriously. Yeah. And we were in Texas, and um, the next day off was like five days later in Orlando. And luckily, it like knocked him out like under where the nerve was. So I wasn't in like crazy pain from my teeth, just kind of in like very embarrassed and also the concussion i'm like this is terrible so like five days later we had a day off in orlando it was a sunday i found an amazing dentist mr charlie capril i think that's how you say his last name we became friends his kids like drums and stuff so like i got his family into some imagine dragons shows after he hooked me up and made some shiny new teeth on a sunday afternoon and i got back on the bus and there we went do you have any photos of this no dude i was so embarrassed like i truly like (laughs) I, I like I was oh. talking like this to everybody. Like I was still, you know, drum tech in a few days through that and like Holy trying to do my crap, job. Dude. It was it was like gnarly. I've, I've got a few stories like that of just like I got to keep hustling. Like no matter what happens, I got to just keep going. Um, so that's one of the crazier ones, I think. <laughs> How many? Uh, you know, when did you go from being? Uh, you know, when did you realize that SJC was a business? Uh, and, and when did you decide, you know, it's time to scale this in a sense of like hiring people, 
doing this stuff. At what point did you feel choked out and uh, and have the sense that I need to make these moves? Like when yeah, did when, wow. in your mind when does when did that thing become a business? Gosh, man, I think the first moment of like realization of like we're doing something. I'm not gonna say important. It was important to me, but I didn't realize it was important to other people until later. Like 2004 or five is when Panic at the Disco, which was one of the first bands we, like first bigger bands that we made a drum set for, they had some insane commercial success. Like right when their first record came out, they were headlining tours, like arenas, and they played the MTV Video Music Awards, which back in the day, MTV VMAs was like the the event to watch, you know? All the new bands, all the awards, the who's who of like the music industry was there. And they played with our drums and our factory was in my grandmother's basement, um, like in the, basically the backyard of the house I grew up in. My grandmother's um, sister helped her out and like built her a house right there. And like, I was always really close to my grandma and my great grandma, they lived there. And so we built the drums in her basement next door to my house. And my brother and me and my sister and my family were just sitting in the living room watching the MTV VMAs on TV, which is stream to millions of people or yeah. broadcast back broadcast then to millions yeah. of people yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. and i'm like this is this is crazy like this is going to happen and then boom like the curtain comes up and the band plays i'm like seriously speechless like i didn't even that drum set was in my grandma's living room because we always used to bring them up from the basement to show her <laughs> oh that one's beautiful that one's cool and this one was like a work of art it, it was li- it lit up and it was a it was a wood drum set that it, we made it light up um, with these crazy, we call them butcher hoops. That guy, the butcher, we yep. invented this wood hoop. My brother cut like these crazy, like Victorian scrolls throughout it, and just our logo was there in front of millions, millions of, people, of people. You know, and like that to me was like such a achievement, and it was like so mind blowing to me that that happened. So that was like my first like okay, and I made the decision pretty shortly after that. Um, I was in I was in my band, and we were on the road, um, just hustling, you know, and. I barely had a cell phone. I didn't know how to text on it. There was no Wi-Fi. There was no, yeah. you know, no iPhone. So I got home and opened up my computer and I'm like, holy moly, there's a lot of emails. Like, this is stressful. Like, I should have gotten back to these people two weeks ago. You know, they they want drums from us, but like, I didn't re- write back to them, you know? So I think I have some like trauma from that where like, I'm pretty OCD about like writing back. My inbox has to be clear constantly. Like, I am... I'm pretty intense with that sort of stuff, you know, um, kind of comes from that, I think. But I made the decision then that like, I can't do the band. Like I got to pick either I go hustle with the band or I focus on the company because I got to be home. So I did, you know, I left the band, which wasn't fun. It was a mute. We all knew, like yeah, we sat you down. Was, you knew it was happening. Yeah, yeah. And they did too. They yeah. came, they rolled in one day at, to my parents' house where we practiced with a big truck and we all sat down and it was just like, I know everyone's like, I know it's like, there's some, some of my friends, you know, some of my greatest friends. Um, so that was that first moment. And then uh, we just got lucky, man. Like my brother went to college to teach to be uh, like a music teacher. And so he was doing his like um, hours, whatever you call it, and uh, did them at a Hudson, Massachusetts high school. And he was there teaching, talking about him, you know, introduced himself, you know, me and my brother make drums. And I went to the University of Southern Maine and blah, blah, blah. And there was this kid in the class, Josh Byrne. And he was just like, dude, I love SJC. Can I work for you guys? And he was just like, I mean, I don't know if we can pay you. Like, we don't really get paid, but like, if you want to come to the factory, like, that'd be cool. So he did. Wait, he like dr- an employee? Yeah, what? right. You guys, we're in business. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he drove, um, and that was the beauty of it. Like, we're in my grandma's basement. No rent. We're not getting paid. I'm living at my parents' house. I'm still under my parents' health insurance. Like, I didn't have a lot of those, like, stressors that business owners that are you know, today doing. So like starting young really helped us out. And like my, I guess being very naive to things and ignorant to a lot of stuff, like helped for me to just kind of like trudge through and just just go. Yeah, yeah. But it also kind of like came back and bit me in the ass probably in the last decade where I'm like, gosh, a lot of those mistakes I made, I really am paying for them now, which I wouldn't have it any other way. Like I was like really trial by fire. And now I've learned so much and done a lot of deep thought and reading books and having mentors and stuff that have allowed me to be like, all right, yeah, you did that and it sucked, but like you learned valuable lessons that you'll never do again now, you know? Um, But Josh, yeah, Josh came in and Hudson was like an hour and a half from our shop and he drove after school on weekends and like, he was like, just can you get me into shows? I was like, for sure. So I got him tickets to shows and he would help make drums. 
And he was our first employee. He turned out to be an incredible addition to the company and like creative beyond measure. Like that, that dude was like powerfully um, important to our company. Josh. Josh, yeah. And um, he was with us for 12 years. Like he, he crushed it. And so, you know, through that, a lot of my friends, the guys in my band would help come down and build drums. Um, you know, friends from just friends like coming in. And then we started paying them and that was a moment for me of like, okay, payroll, taxes, health insurance. Like I was the one that did all the HR stuff, the yearly enrollment and the, when somebody left, if they had insurance, like Cobra, like making them get all the paperwork. And it's like, what I was am I so, doing here, right? Dude, I, I, like, what am I doing? I was so inundated in all that. And so I have a yeah. deep appreciation and respect for all of the aspects of business because I did it. And so now um, we have an incredible general manager um, who handles all that stuff. And I just try every day to let her know how thankful and grateful I am to have her, her, um, her knowledge and passion and understanding and commitment to our company and our mission is so powerful. And all of those things that like, she's like, you know, you do your thing, which is you're passionate about. And like, that's you important. Be you. Like, you, be you, you. be you, Mike. That's what's important for the yeah, company. Let yeah. me handle this stuff. You know, I'm so lucky to have somebody like that now. And I appreciate it because I did it and just hustled and learned um, and my dad helped me a lot. He had a car dealership, so I'd go sit with him every day. I'm like, what does this mean? Yeah. It's like, let and me help Point you. me in the right direction. Yeah. You, um, so the company, quote unquote, was established. What year would you say? I think we really started building drums in like 2002 or three. But All we right. say, I think when we were like, we made the logo and we made the LLC. Yeah, it's like, when do we want to say we were established? And my brother was like, 2000. It's just simple and clean. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful he had made that call because it is. It's just clean. Yeah. 2000. Yeah, in yeah. 2000. And so the, the thing that's great about that too, uh, again, a lot of this conversation on, on the podcast is going to be a lot of talk about e-commerce and stuff. And yeah. thinking about that back in 2000, when did you guys then go the route of e- Like, how are you doing orders before? And yeah. then when you're like, my God, I can sell something through the internet. And what did oh, that yeah. look like? Yeah, dude. I So when I was in bands... Um, like GeoCities websites and like, you know. It was crazy. It was really like early 2000s. It was nothing. When did, when nothing, did e-commerce yeah. really happen? Like what? Yeah, because you had to have custom code. was dom- when the domains were blowing up and then Yeah. Crashed. So you were just literally taking paper orders and like by phone and yeah, back yeah. and forth. Email was maybe something. Yeah, email was around then, but not like. Yeah, email. We, we, so we, I was just, I had knowledge of building websites from the, the stuff I built for my band. Cause I was like, I want my band to have a website where I can put our MP3s and our, to- our shows and our tour dates and stuff. So I was always making our websites. I, I made a bunch of sites on Flash. Remember Flash? Like, yeah, man. Flash I wish was Flash everything. was still around. It was so awesome. Yeah. So that's what, how I made our logo. I drew it in Flash, Dude, and I just Fla- saved it as a and, PDF or whatever. Yeah, Flash was spooky, though. I remember trying to understand that stuff. It was yeah. like over my head, though. Oh, for sure. So I, I was building websites and like learning how to code stuff. So I just built our website when I was in college like on like a GeoCities platform <laughs> and call us, you know? Um, or email me and we'll, we'll get your order. So it was a lot of just paper orders. And then, um, I was on a band called taking back Sunday's website. And that's back in the day, they would have their web developer or webmasters email on there. And I'm like, their website's sick. Like, I wonder who designed it. And so I went and I saw T drummer 86 at AOL.com. I emailed them T drummer. Like he must be a drummer. And it was this dude named Brad Phillip. And, uh, Brad to this day is one of my greatest friends like the dude's an incredible web developer he does stuff for red bull and huge bands and stuff and i hit him up and he i was like could you help me make a website like i don't know i want people to be able to buy stuff on my site and he coded us a full like e-com website before e-com was like even, even a thing ex- for me you know existed. he made a back end where people could securely put their website through i don't even know if it was authorized.net back then whatever it was you know mm-hmm. He built all that, exactly and yeah. he, he made yeah. me a virtual kit designer. He made it so people could drag and drop stuff and wow. see it. And it was it blew my mind. And he was in L.A., um, but he was he was growing up and he grew up in Pittsburgh. So we would just always you know do like a week long all nighter, you know, set up the computers and like build stuff. I would design certain things and plug it in, and he would code it and make it happen. That changed the game for us. Like that plus MySpace and the videos we were doing. He made me like a slot machine game. I was like, I want people to get a token when they get a quote or we ship their drum. So and cool. that token makes a hundred different drums go in a, in, in a third. And if they put their token in and the snare drum matches up like a slot machine and the snare drum pops up, 
they win that snare drum. Just fun ways for people to like engage, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he built all of that stuff for me. And he never charged me. He's like, just make me a snare drum. I'm like, that's going to cost me like $200. Like, dude, are you sure? And he would he come out to trade you. shows and I'd bring them. I'd bring all my buddies on tour with me. So, hey, I'm going to Australia. Like my buddy, Brandon, you want to come and film us? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, I'll just, I'll buy your ticket. We're sleeping on floors. You're probably not going to eat for a week. Like, <laughs> but, but it's going to be a cool experience. It's going to be yeah, great. And so he filmed and like our production quality of our vlogs started to increase. And like, we'd put those on the website and it just, I was just doing things that I thought was fun, you yeah. know? And, uh, then Shopify came out and like we built the platform on that and it made it a lot easier. And I've just, I've always like hacked stuff together. Even our website You've now. you made like, it work. I made yeah. it work. I built our website now and I'm like, I think this will work. Like publish. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Uh, you, where does, where does, where do you see SJC drums in the next, uh, next 10 years, five, 10 years? Like where you, where do you think you guys are going? Yeah, and what's that's a great question. It's a great question. And that's something that I've always kind of battled with. And e even more lately, now that I have such a great crew and like people inside the company that, yeah. you know, my friends were awesome. They, they helped me get through those like learning years and those years of just straight hustle but having like the right person in the right seat is really important and powerful as well. Um, but at the right time, you know, if I had the right person in the right seat back then, we would not be around because the chances that I took and the things that I did then, they would have stopped me. Yeah. Um, and I just did it. The ignorance is bliss kind of thing. I just did it. You know, I'm going to buy an airport shuttle van and put beds in it and we're going to drive to California for the NAM trade show. Like people now would be like, you're an idiot. You're going to break down and die. Like, I'm like, I did it. And my, and I was like, you guys want to go? Sure. Like 15 yeah, dudes it. in a van, just like, let's sleep in a Walmart parking lot and freeze our butts off tonight. But like, we're going to go to California for a week. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So, I you know, it. I look, I'm trying now, like you said, like the whole movement of like, for me specifically with SJC, like the early 2000s, we were really lucky where the networking was so... I want to. It came easy back then because it was such it was organic. A, it was organic. Yeah. It was such a year, such a decade of like all of these bands building themselves on the Warp Tour and all these cool labels that were coming out and using social media. I have been really trying to deep dive in my brain and like um, in my gut, like what do I want SJC to be now? Um, and I feel like we could either age out, we could keep doing the same thing, or we can tap into what we've done in the early days and take everything that I've learned and that we do well now. Our manufacturing is set up with SOPs and it's efficient and it's amazing. Yeah. Take what we did then and like really tweak it so that we can scale, but scale in the right way. I've had partners that were like, how big is your biggest competitor? Oh, they're this many million? Like we should do that too. Let's go get a 70,000 square foot warehouse and do that. It's like, I know that's not what I want, you know? I want the organic growth still. Um, anyway, I think, you know, tweaking the product and making sure that we have the right products at the right price points in the right places, but I really wanna get back to that consumer experience of like making a really sick drum designer that people get education and there's sound files and it's easy to buy and it's fun to buy. Um, I would love more dealers, obviously. Obviously that's a way to grow sales, but the biggest thing for me is like, fulfilling that passion of giving back to the next generation in the the commitment of you know empowering that gen z to like learn how to either run a business or be in the industry um so i'm trying to find ways to make that happen while the business can be sustainable and scale yeah. um and it's not easy because i've always been a perfectionist and i want it to be done a certain way and i want to be able to uh, keep it going. I don't want to just put something out and then wait a year to do it again, yeah. you know? So, so you have a six-year-old son, right? Yes. So if you could give yourself advice to your six-year-old after all these life experiences and these things that you went through, what would that be? That's a great question, man. And I've, um, I've gone through that with him that he's, he's rad. Like I talk about business stuff sometimes and I've, I'll like throw him an idea of like something I'm battling with. He's like, well, you could do this and you would sell more, but you'd make less money. So I don't know if that would work. Like <laughs> he's giving me advice like a lot, which is, which is awesome. Like putting it through, through like the perspective of him is rad. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, you know, he's six. And so he's going through a lot of new things in his life. And I've just always told him and 
the dude I mentioned earlier, John Strader, one of my great friends, and like he was in my band and um, helping at SJC, he would always tell me, I would always get really nervous playing shows. Like I'd blank. There were shows that I played where I forgot what I was doing and just stopped playing, you know, and the, if the drummer stops, like everything stops. It's a train wreck. That's and, the truth. <laughs> it's, it stinks. And that's happened a few times that I've, that, that really impacted me. And he would always just say, confidence will carry you. Confidence will carry you. And so I tell that to my son, like if he's nervous to like, you know, go hang out with his buddies or do whatever, I'm like confidence will carry you. And I just played a show like a month ago and I was freaking out before we played, like shaking. And he's like, daddy, confidence will carry you. Oh, that's oh. Awesome. I'm like, dude, thank you so much. Like, <laughs> thank so you. Cool. That, so that's always my, my advice um, to him and to myself. Um, like, you know, go for it, hustle, like all the kind of cliche things that you can say. But um, I'm a big planner. I, uh, a, my buddy's always busted me. I'm a big planner. The four P's, prior planning prevents poor performance. <laughs> Is that four? Prior planning prevents four, four, five, five, five P's. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with four. Sometimes the the P's, one. man. Like you got a you prior plan. plan. That <laughs> you plan that <laughs> That's like the, 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 the kind of corny, you know, advice. It's like you got a pr prior plan. Like I'm a planner. You can't just like go and do something. And sometimes you can. Like that yeah, trial by fire thing. Yeah, you yeah, know? Stories, yeah, yeah. You, what's so funny to hear that from you is like I, I, I say, I think you see that as uh, what you over time have morphed into. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. Because yeah, that yeah. guy would not have snuck into the warp tour. <laughs> right. No, right. The prior, <laughs> yeah. There was no prior planning. That was like, For well, sure. it was a little bit. You drove there. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of that. But like, uh, yeah. what's that, what that's done is you've now taken all that life experience of everything. And now you realize, oh my God, if I actually kind of, put this together like yeah. holy yeah. crap what can i do Don't exactly that's that. that's yeah. the tweaks i'm trying to make right now is like yeah still be edgy i guess you can say still go for it but like do it you know i've got i've got employees and like i've got my livelihood there have to be more calculated risks that i take but also like still take risks and still just go for it um so yeah i guess that would be some of the pieces of advice yeah. i would give him that he's now giving me yeah thanks <laughs> yeah um yesterday we uh we filmed a, a podcast or whatever on like uh, uh, more cheese, less whiskers. And and um, not to get into that whole thing with this today, but I just know having talked to you about a lot of things you want to make and create and do forward, your his mindset is very much into that, like giving uh, a quite a, a quite a bit out there. And I know a lot of, uh, you know, School of Rock and, and um, even the loyal to the craft thing that we're talking about doing, yeah. a lot of that is exactly what you're trying to do. You're not trying to sell a drum kit to people. You're trying to essentially kind of give them an opportunity to, to experience life in a different way, kind of find yeah. themselves, be creative. And and you become the vehicle for them in that expression. Yes. And and a lot of your, uh, your content ideas and the things we've been talking about doing uh, are very much aligned with the the thought process that you know Matt brought up yesterday. So I think you're in a really good place for the future and where you're going with it. I, yeah. I, I think it's awesome to see you and hear your stories. Like you hear the stories of like Mike in the past, and you're like, "How's this guy alive today?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, <laughs> like straight up, dude. I I often yeah. too like, I mean, literally, there's so many things of like tour in Australia, van almost going off a cliff because our driver <laughs> fell asleep. Like seriously, I. Yeah. It makes me nervous to have a six-year-old that like likes this world yeah. that I'm in because I'm like I don't want you to Isn't do those funny, things, though? dude. Like, how did my parents, you know, go to sleep at night <laughs> knowing that I'm like just uh, he's in Asia right now? I don't know how he's and I didn't even know. I go and land and I'm like, how are we getting around? Like, do we have a hotel tonight? Where are we sleeping for like a month? <laughs> for like, prior plans. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's yeah, why the I'm peas on this one? seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Five just on go this for one. it with that, yeah, you know. Yeah. But yeah, man, I just, I have experiences of like being a kid and I was in high school and 311 was my favorite band, is my favorite band. And all my high school friends knew that. And someone pranked me one night and they were like, hey, my uncle has an extra ticket for 311. They're playing at the Palladium. Go meet him outside. And I did. And no one came and gave me a ticket. And the, the, oh, the owner of the Palladium God, came out. Sucked, dude, dude the owner of the Palladium came out and he handed me a ticket. He's like, what's up, kid? And I was just like, hey. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm waiting for a ticket. Somebody said they're going to give me one. And like, he's like, 311's playing already. And I was like, oh. And he's like, here. And it, and it made me feel like he was Willy Wonka. It literally, and I went in by myself. I was like 13 and right. middle school, not high school, middle school, like 
those jerks. I was so young, and they pranked me at, at 13 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. Oh, I went to the school the next day. I was like, 311 was sick. You know? They're like, what? <laughs> like, what? And I was like, I got in, bro. Like, <laughs> I got in. How did you get there? You're yeah. 13. My mom dropped me off. Oh. And you know what, dude? My mom, after the show, we followed 311's bus on the highway. Like, and I was like, yeah, like thinking that they're going to pull over and I'm going to meet them on the highway. You know, I was crazy. But uh, he let me in, and it, and it, I re remember that so vividly. Like he gave me a shot, and now that I am, you know, SJC makes drums for some of these crazy bands that I remember seeing Green Day as a 15 year old. Like wow, and like I'm friends with that dude now. That to me is not. I don't take it lightly, you know. And I want to be able to somehow, some way, be that guy for someone else, for someone else, and give them an opportunity. So we've done these like workshops for kids with School of Rock, and if I see some kid that just you can tell when they just want it so bad. And it's like, hey, yo, come here. Give them a free drum, you know? Give them FaceTime Josh from 21 Pilots and let them meet them, you know? After we filmed that commercial, yep. um, Cannon, I literally, Josh FaceTimed me and was just like, yo, Cannon, I heard you're shooting a commercial. And he was just like, he cried. Like, I'm that's able insane. to be that Willy Wonka, you know? Like, yeah. that's yeah. so, dude. And that's again, as a, yeah, as a dad, tear up. as a dad, like, Whatever my son wants to do, like I hope that there are people that will give him the opportunity in that regard. And the world we live in now is like, you know, it can be cutthroat. Social media can be great, but can also not. Um, I just want to be a positive impact for the next generation of kids. And like, you know, it's important. Mike, I, I don't, that's beyond inspiring because I, I think all of us can do that in our own way. Yeah. No matter the circumstance. For sure. Like, uh, I, it's that positive uh, look out on life and um, thinking about the people that are around you all the time and giving them experiences and realize that, man, I've had some cool experiences and just constantly thinking about paying it forward. Yeah. Dude, you're going to, I think, uh, I think your legacy is going to be so far beyond drums um, it, just because of that mentality. And, and you may not see it here but i think you'll see it years to come the, the the kids and the people that you've affected after maybe we're all long and gone because yeah. of that that makes you you yeah um i wish i'd play drums because i'd buy drums every <laughs> single day <laughs> because like honestly that's the why like that's yeah. the why and that's i think that's the heart behind your company that i just so infatuated by we're totally going to have you guys go crazy on a drum kit for triworks because I yeah, want it to be say. like when we get in that new building, it's happening. Like I just yeah. want it to be the most wild, over the top junk kit ever. Because I think it's imp I think it's important for what that symbolizes. Yeah, yeah. and and, uh, and so yeah, dude. I appreciate it, man. I I you know it means a lot, and I and I I talk to friends about this because the question of like what is SJC and th my, my whole thing is like three, five, ten year plan. Like I want to make sure I have. A target a goal make it attainable and keep you know checking that and checking myself and looking at those milestones and stuff and the past few years I've realized that our company is is such an incredibly complex business like we literally we have so much inventory and allowing people to get whatever they want is pretty difficult you know obviously the the mid-range and entry-level lines that we have are very important to have um, but I I've I've battled in my head of like am I in the wrong business where like if I, you know, guitars outsell drums, I don't know the ratio, but it's pretty incredible how much bigger guitars are. Um, and I'm like, should I have made guitars? Like, would I be further along in life if I made guitars? So I don't, I don't know, but like drums are my thing. It's, that's my vehicle to get into this world. And that's always been my passion. And I've never, um, I've never wavered from that. And I think I've kind of had this like inner battle the past few years of like who am i you know yeah. because like i feel like i want my business to be a little bit further along and i don't know how to do it you know i'm doing the same things that i've always done but we are on that cusp of like you know all the ideas i've just written down and especially meeting you guys you know and now meeting you guys like i'm so grateful for for that because i've been probably over the last like six or seven years the experiences i've had um since i've kind of settled down you know got married and knew I wanted to have a family and really just enjoy going to bed at 8 p.m. and not 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 knowing where I'm going to sleep at night. You know, like my wife will make fun of me. She's like, it's Friday night. I'm like, I know, I just, I like my bed. Like I want to go to bed and, you know, you know yeah. I've, I, I've, I've hustled for so long. I feel like I like aged out like really quickly, yeah. but I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm back on like trying to figure out those next steps and super excited to, 
to just throw the ideas at the wall, you know, with you guys yeah. and, and see where we can take it um, on that side, because that's where we need a lot of help. Yeah. I'm a one man show on that side, you know, like our team does so much back at the factory. Um, you know, what I need to do strategically and with the vision, that's really going to be what takes us into the future. Yeah, I think uh, like uh, every every person we talk to that has we say successful is like they all say I'm just getting started. Yeah, right? that's and, exactly and, and awesome. like yeah, everyone says yeah. that you even said it last night at dinner. I would I would say the same thing for you. I really think you're just getting started. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I, everything in life always happens for a reason at certain times, and sometimes it takes that time. Yeah, and this is any business out there starting and working and hard. And like I can't make it tomorrow. I can't make it tomorrow. Like keep keep doing it. If you yeah. believe in it, just keep keep doing it. And then over time, the opportunities just happen. And it's having like that, I guess that trust in the process, trust in doing what's right, that then things start lining up. Yeah. Um, and I think you're, you've had an extremely successful business. You won't give yourself enough credit for what it is and where you're at and what you've done and the social world you've built and the relationships you've built. And now you're little, you're literally looking into the technical things of the business to help that thing grow, which are easier to do than yeah. anything yeah. you've just discussed. <laughs> like, like, uh, like, 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 yeah. <laughs> Got the well, I know you're super stressed about that portion yeah, of the yeah. thing, no, but <laughs> everything you've talked about today is what people would give their soul to have one of those opportunities, yeah, right? That's cool. And, and you live in that great network of just just true amazingness, and the uh, the widget can be fixed, the widget can be fine tuned. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the uh, the image and the likeness and the what is SJC drums is something that takes years and years to establish, which you've done, and that's and that's what's so super super awesome. So yeah, and the goal it. is always found in the adversity. When it's going yeah. really good, you're not doing yeah. that deep dive. Yeah, so you're when right. It, when it sucks. That's yeah. when you're really looking at stuff, the fine tooth comb, and that's where you find the gold. Yeah, I appreciate it. You guys definitely talking to you and um, your team has definitely inspired me to try to get back to that why. You know, I've I lost it in all, a lot of the crazy stuff we've done over the last six or seven years with the business and kind of being on display on TV shows and stuff like that, like really kind of impacted me in a way that I definitely, I don't regret anything in my life. I'm I'm proud of the things that I've done and and been able to learn from, but it, you know, having a perception of what you think is going to happen and then it going so completely different, um, it impacted me in so many ways that took me pretty far from the why of SJC. And, um, you know, I've done a lot of soul searching and figuring those things out and I make things pretty complex in my head, you know, like you said, the widget can be fine tuned and everything like that. And, And I know that, um, I've just always been the guy to like try to wear all the hats Um, and uh, just, you know, meeting you guys and and I'm excited to pick your brains more. I I remember the first time we had a, not, we don't have to get into all the details. I remember the first time you and I had that lunch meeting and, uh, and just the conversations that evolved from that. And then how easy it was to have the conversations with you. And then when we left, I told him, I was like, God, this is just a guy I feel like I've met, like known forever. And I felt the same way about Matt and everything else. And you're just like, man, life is so good right now with all these things that are happening. And, and you just, you want to go home and you're like waiting for the bottom to drop out, right? Yeah. Like, and, and it's hard to, you hate to say that, but anybody that's had a successful business has gone through a lot of adversity where you've had those bottom moments. And or if you're still, or, yeah, like, and it, still, it, and, it and never, the thing yeah, that you're, ends. exactly. And, and you have to be always prepared for that. But, having that conversation with you, I was like, dude, Mike is this guy that like, you just, I just want to help. Like, and, and I know that sounds really, really simple, but help. And like, it's just, we had multiple meetings. We've talked about a ton of ideas of things we we're going to do. And like, and, and I was like, I just got to make sure Mike doesn't get in his own mind. Like we yeah. have to do these things because it's, uh, yeah. it's just so awesome. And I, and I know TriWorks, I know we're excited about what we're going to force you to do. There's so because much potential for it. You've got such a that, cool brand, such a cool story, such uh, yeah. a great foundation and so much history uh, that you can tell. And when you can tell that kind of history for a brand and it speaks that yeah. story and then the people that your customers are going to, they're going to feel like they're part of the team, like yeah. you want them to build that community, like you have all of the things you just need the people to create all of that stuff like Josh yeah. and yeah. his team can do that can put it out there. Uh, but you know, yeah. and you've already built a huge community. I mean, you have 300 and something thousand followers on Instagram just on Insta, is yeah. insane. Yeah. And so, you know, there, there's people that want to follow you and, and know what you're doing. And, and there's so much creative stuff that you can do with drums that seem like that's really what you get excited about. And yeah. so I think that building that niche 
within being able to have the customization, but, you know, of course, get them into the store or, you know, they buy it off the shelf with something that's still custom. You know, yeah. I like the idea that like, it's not just a chrome set with, you know, walnut finish. It's like got some unique stuff, but it's standard enough that the masses will want it. And yeah. it's not too crazy that it's not going to sell. But so get them to buy it then. And then they're like, I really want to customize it now. Yeah. Now I want to step and the one. accessories. I mean, do you sell, you know, selling the accessories for them to customize their own stuff? Yeah, So exactly. they've got your stuff. Now they want to switch out the, you know, the, the washers or whatever yeah, it may exactly. be, you know? Oh, that's actually a rad idea. I yeah. Like that. So, I mean, yeah, all, I mean, there's so much stuff. That's easy that money. Can, that's easy, yeah, easy yeah. shipping. Oh, and it's yeah. even, you know, if they buy it off the shelf, I try to, you know, I made like a landing page on the website where they there's like a QR code in the box and it's like, welcome to SJC. I want to shoot some videos of like me going, yo, welcome to the family. It says it, Absolutely. but I want a video of yeah. that. And it's like, 100%. leave us a review, send us your photo for the family page and all that yeah. fun stuff after the fact. But I, you made a really good point and I, I appreciate everything you guys are saying. It, it makes me it boosts my confidence, you know, that I, that I feel like it can happen and we can, we can do it. Um, but I guess I would also say to my son and my dad always said this to me and I forgot it after a while. Cause I, I've been burned a few times in business, you know, like, like we all will in life and in business and that's okay. I'm not bitter. It's, it's, it is what it is. I've brings to where you are today. Yeah. I've developed thicker skin, but my dad would always say, surround yourself with like-minded successful people that can, can take you out of that comfort zone and can, can help boost you and give and do things that perhaps you can't do, but they're successful for a reason. They're like-minded where they can see the vision and the strategy and help you boost that up. And having that lunch and meeting you guys, I left being like, whoa, like <laughs> I think I can do certain things that I always thought was so unattainable. And I would just kind of leave in like Mike's sandbox. I have like a Mike's sandbox document where I'm like, I'm never gonna bring this up to anybody in the company because I feel like it's just too crazy but I started looking back at that stuff. And so every time we meet up, I'm like, all right, which ideas should I throw at them and, and say, cause I have so many that I yeah, want to do. He did. He, <laughs> he literally that night uh, on WhatsApp, whoosh, like this yeah. thing. I'm like, yes, <laughs> all of this. Don't, you know, obviously they can have people around you that can reel you back in, but also those ideas are what have gotten you to where you are today. Yeah, so yeah. never stop. Yeah. Well, like I was pulling from that sandbox. I was told. I was told to there. stop for a bit. There were well, years that was just like, no, dude, just like, never. Don't and, come and, in. No. Don't go. And it's just like, yeah. maybe that. Okay, sure. Maybe I should go make guitars too now. Then because if like if SJC no. can't keep scaling, I want to be able to throw fifty ideas in my team to go. Those forty nine were not awesome. That one though is sick. Like yeah. go do that. Okay, yeah. cool. Like, yeah, it's probably better that you do that with. Like-minded people, not yeah. your team, because you give them whiplash. Like so doing it here and then having that one idea and then yeah, yeah. throwing that to them. But that's that's I think impactful too is like making sure that you have that um if somebody is not uh able to see the vision and help you hone it, um, maybe they're not the right person to be hanging with. And you know, it can like really deplete your your energy and your confidence. And I've I've had that whiplash a few times and it's taken me a bit to get back there. Um, That's and, powerful. uh, you know, you guys definitely, um, it's exciting talking to you guys and seeing the, the potential. Um, you know, I will do the stuff we've been talking about for sure. You know, I definitely, uh, I just yesterday driving back from the airport, it's a long drive. I call one of my buddies and we talked the entire drive out here and he's, he boosted me up to just be like, dude, you just got to go for it. Like you have to just, you just got to go and do do it like I would have told myself when I was 20 you know confidence will carry you exactly yeah. <laughs> the importance of storytelling too uh in like a branding and and all this other stuff is so uh is something we're we're really excited about doing and trying to help with you um and I think you see that in that first commercial we did uh was telling that story about the drum kit right yeah and, and went what went through that and and nothing in that piece of media that we create that says, hey, come buy the kit. Hey, exactly. buy, hey have you need a kit? Come buy the kit. Hey, exactly. you see the kit? Our oh, drums the sound good. There's yeah, nothing our drums sound good. Hey, uh, yeah. this is the cheapest kit on the like, what well, None of that. Right. No. You're selling the vision of what you related to, what inspired you, yeah. what inspired all the other drummers. And that's that's the goal. Like yeah. uh, that's the why behind the kit. Right. Right. And and that's what grows an audience of people. That's what brings a following is yeah. that is that whole why yes. Uh, that's me. Like they yeah. see themselves in that piece of in that content. And yeah, I'm I'm excited and also scared to put it out because I want to make sure that, like I said <laughs> last like night, everything's like, right. That like our back end is good, but also like you know we're a small, really resourceful company, yeah. and 
you know, I know we can scale. I know it's possible. I just want to make sure that I don't create bottlenecks or like break anything like that. We've worked so hard to like yeah, make efficient, you, you know, you, you will. <laughs> I know. You're going to break like, it. It, it, it will. Yeah, I know. Like and that's the process, that. right? That I was always yeah. so excited about that is like, all right, yeah, this doesn't work. Let's strategize and find out. And through that process, you find new ideas and like yeah. oh wow like that light bulb was would it wouldn't have been there had you not done it's, that again that's the gold and the adversity yeah, it, like, i know you don't find that until you iterate a few times for it, sure and you to talk about breaking not to go off that like you will sell to a point that you're gonna be like ah, i'm stuck right yeah david last year ran out of straps during christmas <laughs> yeah. he sold during christmas yes yeah. he sold he, so, he, he owns sold, a belt company he owns a belt company he <laughs> sold so many and that time he underestimated a bit this year he's made plans to, to break that though right yeah. like so he would never have been ready for this year had yes, last year absolutely. not happened yeah. yeah we would have done the same thing you know i mean it would just been the status quo we would really so wouldn't have pushed ourselves when it so. breaks yeah. it's going to break yeah, yeah. yeah be happy it broke <laughs> uh, yeah no you know and I, I i guess i i am i i am happy of the last few years that I've gone through because we've we've we have done that we've honed it I've been able to really find the right people again right yeah. person right seat and like we've got the right team now which is awesome not that the team that we had before wasn't that but it like was, it was what got you to here it was what got us to here and like to scale and really get it going like you know I I undervalued and didn't even really know some of the stuff we needed, SOPs and all that sort of stuff. You guys were talking last yeah, night yeah. about like filming, this is how you make the same X, Y, or Z every time. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's important. And yeah. like, I again, want my consumer to have the experience of like unboxing that kit. It's yep. smelling a certain way. It's ready yep. to play. It's tuned up. You know, nothing worse than like it not being what they wanted. Yeah. Like that stuff makes my gut drop and i'm Nothing like, like you know, a christmas gift with no batteries right uh, yeah dude you're like oh this is great get to play with it tomorrow yeah and that that i think ultimately <laughs> yeah. is what scares me we're like but again you know that. we gotta we gotta we gotta push the boundaries again and that's that's yeah. what's so excitingly um anxiety provoking for me right now is i feel like we're on i am personally and the company is at that point of like the next 10 years are going to be super exciting to like really push and and make sjc you know the next the, the the next version of SJC really you know like yeah. what is it and yeah. I think with the media and the 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 product and everything on socials there's so much opportunity. I love that you you didn't say the next version of another company like you want to be the next version of yourself exactly because you guys are so unique in what you've done and and I think that that's exactly what you need to do is just continue that um, yeah. you know reaching the masses with something that's cool that that's unique but yet you know can be sold to more but then honing in on the customization as well because there's going to be those people that they get that one then they want a, a custom one you know? exactly and that's, exactly that's how you're going to really be and, able to scale is by getting into more stores yes. that you know can sell the just the like you said the, the entry level price point and then from there they're going to love it and they're going to want the custom ones exactly the yeah. clavio flows that i built i'm trying to hit the like you purchased a pathfinder entry level mm -hmm. in 18 months hit them with a text or an email with like a video from us not, being not like, even 18 you know? months you need to be like it could be like six months you yeah know what i mean like, yeah it less than you know i mean oh yeah i geek out on that stuff or, and how, like to, or how to it. like or how to trick out the kit you just bought Absolutely. like yeah. like hey the, hey you bought this kit the entry Dude, level get these kits. things for the yeah, kit the right. and, these, and, the, and now when they now when they've now. finished all the accessories and that they're bored as heck it's like, like yeah, time yeah. to next i gotta do I'm just gonna get my custom kit because I've bought everything you guys offer to make this mine. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love that. The entry yeah, level I've, I've, and then customize it with with different flares. Yeah. You know? Like flares yeah. and the washer colors and yeah. the nuts Sick. and bolts, your other colors, all yeah, those things. Easy like, stuff. Like that's easy. easy for you with with yeah. Great margins. I mean, yeah. Yeah, this that's has cool. been great. I'd love I'd like <laughs> it if you'd come back and sit in with us more often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. if you'd like to do that. I would love to. Okay. Well, Mike, yeah. SJC drums, holy smokes! Out, I kind of I want to start getting my son into drums now. Yeah. Like, uh, you <laughs> yeah, know, it's like, awesome. Although I don't. How did your parents react when you know? I mean, with yeah. the drums, the I, parent of the year, by the way. Yeah, yeah. my parent, man, my parents were always so supportive. Like, literally, I asked, I asked for a drum set. I heard three eleven, and I was like, I want a drum set for Christmas, and they got me a drum set for Christmas. Like, really supportive, and it was just like, well, what's next? And I was like, I want to take lessons. So drove me. Like That's I said, every couple of days to go get drum lessons, paid for it, waited outside, waited in, in the you know waiting room for me, 
obviously listening to me and my brother smash on our drums, my neighbors, my grandma, <laughs> listening to us build neighbors drums in our basement, like router. Yeah. It's quieted down over there. Dad, Dude, Nell, yeah. Dad Nell has hearing aids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> neighbors hearing the router tables going off in my grandma's basement at 2 a.m., you know. Oh, wow. Um, so supportive. Your my grandma grandpa- sleeping through it. Like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> You know, dude, even to like bands showing up to my grandma's house, like some of my favorite bands, this hardcore band called Converge, <laughs> showing up at my grandma's house, knocking on the door. And my grandma's like, Michael, your friends are here. And it's like, well, there's Kurt Ballou, the guitarist for Converge, coming down the stairs in the basement. Isn't like, that wild. And I'm like 15. I'm like, hey, dude, like, here's your snare drum. It's like my grandma and my great grandma, my grandfather Child would labor. come in. Yeah. Yeah. Child labor making the custom drums. Like, yeah. Like, people are like, well, who's the owner? I'm like, that's, that's me. That's <laughs> like, No way. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. They, you know, so my cool. family, seriously, my grandfather would come help and make jigs for us to be like, hey, you can make this faster if you yeah. do this. Like my mom and dad, now again, drive. Josh's language here. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Driving us to shows and supporting us on that path. I think we record uh, another episode later. Yeah. <laughs> unpa- yeah. yeah. And that's the commercial we shot. Like, I wanted a mom or a dad in the commercial, like, getting the first drum set for their kid Inspired. to show that, to speak to the parents of, like, I understand that this is a big purchase and that, you know, you don't know if you want to have your kids smashing on the drums and listening to that every night. You know, we went through some iterations of like, should we have like glasses falling off of the shelf, like of him smashing his drums? Like parents that support yeah. kids in anything, music, sports, education, whatever it is, like it's important. Like having that, again, surrounding yourself with like-minded people and things like that, supportive people, um, parents, guardians, friends, teachers, like all of that to me is like the most important thing. And so not every kid can choose that. They don't always have that opportunity to be growing up in a household like that. So I feel extremely lucky and fortunate to have had that. Cause like this company would definitely not be here if it weren't for all of those things. Awesome. awesome. Well, Mike, thanks for your time. Thank SDC you guys. Drums, you guys rock stories, rock. This is just the beginning. Uh, I'm sure we'll have you back. Uh, absolutely. Thanks guys. Like you're Can't just wait. scratching the surface on this whole thing. So <laughs> 